How would you classify the difference between the cells that you're seeing? Can you actually spot the major differences between them? Any structures that jump to you? Um, when I look at these cells, I actually see the differences between them. I know that one of them is an archaea, one of them is going to be a true bacteria or a eubacteria, another is a fungus cell, another is a plant cell, another is an animal cell, and another is an example of a protozoa. Can you actually tell the difference between them? Well, that is how you taxonomy is for. It is classified the difference between organisms that exist and that we can actually establish relationships between them that can help us understand the progression of life and the way the life works. At the end of this video lecture series, we should return to this, vid, this slide and see if you can classify the different kinds of cells that you're actually seeing in this slide. But either way, taxonomy is the mechanism of actually marking or separating the animals in groups based on the evolutionary relationships that exist between them or in the uh, hierarchy of organization or complexity. And this also comes from the need to actually um, humans to organize the information that we have. It's actually how our brains work and it's actually how we set up our societies. Think about when you learn social studies and you learn about the fact that we are all living in this planet Earth but within this planet Earth we separate politically or socioeconomically the land in continents. And then these continents each will have different countries inside of them which have different states which have different uh, counties in which have different cities which have different neighborhoods which have different buildings which have different families living inside of them and then you have rooms within those places and so forth you see how there's a hierarchy of organization likewise scientists have developed a hierarchy of life to help categorize the animals or organisms in general in ways that actually establishes relationships between them especially in terms of trees of life like the ones you see here which actually help us understand the evolutionary relationship between them and therefore understand how life actually works now this is actually daunting test to complete because it's estimated that over 13 billion different species exist today in the world and that's only about 5% of the actual species that have ever existed are actually have been named which this which means that we only have only begun ex exploring the variety of life that exists today and that has existed in the history of, of the of the earth Remembering, of course, that when we look at the fossil record, for example, we only use a look at a fraction of the species that could possibly have existed because those only happen to be the ones that were preserved, which is usually an accidental preservation or something that is more common at that time, and that's probably why it was the one that was preserved. And so we're only seeing a picture of the life on Earth when we look back into history. And even today, looking at the things that do exist, we only have just begun uh, exploring life. The majority of the life we found today is found in the tropics, where the biodiversity is increased by the productivity levels of those ecosystems or those biomes. And the majority of the unnamed species are actually microscopic organisms that are very, 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 very similar to each other to, and only a trained eye can actually tell the difference between them and this only after actually doing several micro microscopy techniques to actually identify specific differences between the structure of them or looking at it DNA wise like we'll talk about later in the lecture series now there's also the fact that new organisms are discovered every day and that evolution is still happening and so even if we did discover all the life on earth new life was constantly being formed and so there's this is going to be a task that never ends to actually try to identify all the species that are on earth and that's it's very humbling to think of the great variety of life and you should know from the evolution uh, lecture series that this variety is, a, is has everything to do with the way the life actually works and therefore by studying the variety of life we learn more about what life actually is and how it works and that's a journey that we have only just begun and it's a beautiful beautiful journey because life has so much beauty and variety I've always liked to say to my students that I truly believe that biology at the very least is a two-year course even at the high school level it should be because the first half of the course you should get this far and then you should spend a whole year at least exploring the beauty of variety of life at a macroscopic level I feel that we spend so much time talking about microbiology and biochemistry and genetics and the mechanisms of evolution in very little time talking about the beautiful part of biology that you can actually see and experience which is the different types of life forms which are macroscopic and you can actually analyze and 
those of you who are interested should explore this and the lecture series that continue from this point forth, even if you have not actually finished the year uh, and reached this point. It's a good idea to, you know, those of you who find it interesting, continue and learn more biology as you go from here. And those of you who love this stuff should go on to study in college and spend, where you actually spend months talking about each of these groups that we're going to talk about in this lecture series separately. And I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this particular uh, area of study, which is taxonomy. And I'll see you guys in the lecture series.